I was reading an article just a few days ago about a, a man who had been wrongfully accused of a murder. And unfortunately, as the situation goes, he was of such limited means that he could not hire legal counsel for himself at any stage of his process. And for several years, he sat imprisoned, wondering if there was anything he could do in order to find some kind of peace or solace in this situation that he found himself in. And one day, during a free hour in the penitentiary that he was at, he found himself wandering the shelves of the prison library. And he noticed a section that he had never seen before on legal reform. And he started reading pages and pages of law, day and night, as much as he could, until he finally realized that of all the things he had been through and all the years he had been in prison, he realized he could finally represent himself in an appeals process. And so he did. And he worked hard and long going back and forth with a judge and opposing legal counsel to try to find some type of peace and reconciliation in the situation that he found himself in. And now, several years later, at what would be the retirement age of most individuals, he's finally a free man. And folks recently interviewed him to ask, why, why is it that you felt you needed to push so hard in order to finally clear your name? He said, if I wasn't persistent, if I wasn't able to see who God made me to be, then no one would ever be able to see that. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus tells a parable about a woman who is trying to seek justice in some situation that she is dealing with, and the judge has no desire to hear her case. In fact, regularly tries to avoid her, as it would seem, from this passage that we have today. It's interesting, in the third verse, we hear the woman's cry. She says, grant me justice against my opponent. On Tuesday morning, while I was with some of the other pastors going through today's readings in their original languages, we noticed something very unique. That word opponent that shows up in our English Bibles could also mean grant me justice against my accuser. Grant me justice against the one who has brought charges against me. As people of God, we know from our constant rehearing of Scripture and retelling of Scripture that all of us, all of us daily stand accused of our shortcomings, our own misgivings, and our own faults and failures in our lives. And our daily call and cry is for someone to intervene in our behalf, someone to be persistent in love and care, to advocate for us, to bring about reconciliation, hope, and real justice for us. And we as people of faith know that one to have been Christ Jesus our Lord. And in these days, the Holy Spirit who continues to stir up our hearts and our minds and advocate for us so that we might know God's grace freely given to us. This morning, we gather with these wonderful confirmands who are making promises that, yes, we want Jesus to continue to be our advocate. 
Yes, we want our Lord to continue to come to bat for us, to speak good words to us, to be the one who claims us as God's very own. And we, people of God, gathered here to witness that. We're making a promise to. We're promising to journey beside these young persons. To remind them of the story of a God's love that is so great that he chose to come into this world to live, to die, and yes, to rise again for each of our sakes. As members of the body of Christ, our call, our responsibility is to be that ceaseless, tireless caregiver for one another. To put ourselves in the middle of situations that call us to the restoration of a world so longing for peace and hope again. These confirmands are just stepping out in that journey. Many of us have been in it ourselves for many years now and we can attest that it is not an easy journey. That there have been times that we ourselves have longed for someone to be that advocate on our behalf. Those times where we have felt lost or afraid. And yet we can also, if we take a moment find those times too where one of us here or somewhere in this world walked beside us, who lifted us up in a time of need, who reminded us that we were all marked with the sign of the cross and called the child of God. Someone who would remind us that we are all precious and deeply important as members of God's family together. Yes, in just a few moments, those promises that these confirmands will make will be done and over. And we will have our cake, which reminds me, stay for cake afterwards. And we'll be on our way. But the promise that God made for us when we were washed in the waters of baptism won't go away. They'll be with us forever. No matter where we go from this place, no matter who we encounter, we will always be marked as children of God, called to share our faith in this world and to journey beside one another in the promise that Christ won for us in the victory at the cross. Thanks be to God. Amen.